is Gary Vaynerchuk and this is a very, 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 <laughs> very special edition of the Ask Gary V Show. We've gone from red to blue in honor of my friend here in the organization of Chase. Let me break down the story for you, the excitement I have, and the alpha beta nature of what we're doing here. Number one, uh, I was in my Vayner Media chief executive hat uh, in, in a Chase small business meeting. I'll let my uh, dear friend here uh, introduce himself in a minute. And basically we started talking about this space and, and my involvement in it. And uh, what, what I was really excited about was our client Chase was like, we need to get closer to the small business user, yeah. right? And I was like, well I have an idea. And so we started shooting around and basically what you're seeing here is a very special edition of the Ask Gary Vee Show where, we'll see how this goes. Yeah. Um, but what we're looking to do is actually bring in small businesses to do the Q&A. Instead of the call that you guys are used to and the live stream that you're used to, uh, we are going physical with the Ask Gary V show today. And so let me introduce my co-host. Why don't you say hello to the Vayner Nation? Sure. Hey, I'm Brent Reinhardt and I work for Chase. I run marketing and product for our business bank. And so for normal people, what does that mean? So normal people, that means that I'm the guy who's responsible for our deposit and lending programs that run through Chase. So if you have a Chase business account with us, then odds are you have a product that I in some way, shape or form service or I'm responsible for. So for me, what was really exciting when I started jamming with Brent on, on this piece of business, we've been having, a, we, we at VaynerMedia have worked on other parts of the Chase business, but this became new. It was fun for me because especially in, I'm in the other corner of where I normally am and I'm looking at New Jersey right now. I could probably see my dad if I had like superpower vision because he's really just over there with Wine Library. I grew up in an environment in a small business where my dad banked with Chase for many, many, many years and continues to and so I, uh, it, we connected on a lot of things and what I'm most excited about is really creating a, a context of, I come from a SMB business bank world and then I lived through a Silicon Valley raised capital world and now we've got Kickstarter and we've got all these different things and so we wanted to team up. We've got three small businesses here with us. We'll have this gentleman introduce himself in a minute. We're just gonna answer some questions. So uh, before we move on, this is interesting to me. You've been in the big corporate world. Yeah. Were you, as, a, as a kid, did you grow up wanting to be in the corporate world? Did you want to be entrepreneurial? Like, w- you know, we didn't grow up, these yeah. kids don't get it. We didn't yeah. grow up where entrepreneurship <laughs> was cool. This thing, yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, so uh, I don't think anybody ever wakes up and says, I want to go work for a bank. Um, <laughs> I, um, I, I sort of fell into it. I come from a small business family. My father was a partner in a law firm, and later on in life, my mom ran a cleaning business. So two completely opposite ends of the spectrum. One very professional, uh, probably had a lot of support and infrastructure around it on my father's side, and then the other, my mom, who just decided she was done working for somebody else one day, and said, what can she do? And she went out and started cleaning people's houses and made a business out of it, and ultimately employed you know, five, 10 people at a time and was, in her mind, incredibly successful because she did that, so. I'm gonna jump in there really, I apologize, get used to it because that's how we roll in the Ask Gary V show. I like to interrupt, I know, I know. I love the five to 10 people worked for her yeah. thing and she thought was very successful. I think that's right. I think my biggest pet peeve right now for the whole audience is everything's gotta be like a trillion dollar Uber and Facebook thing. I, I'm just complete, the power of the internet is not creating Instagram and Uber and Amazon. The power of the internet is creating SMB's long tail for the people that don't wanna work for a bank or work for VaynerMedia or work somewhere else that wanna do it for themselves. And I think we have to start having healthier conversations and I'm curious to see where you're about to go about the cadence of the business. So let's do that. Yeah. Why don't you introduce yourself to the Vayner Nation? Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Rich Malachy, um, CEO of Malachy Parts and Service. We're based out of Bayonne, New Jersey. Uh, second generation. Big ups, Jersey. Big ups. <laughs> um, second generation family business that my father started over 30 years ago. Uh, we service commercial kitchen equipment, ovens, steamers, grills, refrigerators, freezers, um, and we just added HVAC to the lineup. Um, and we're servicing you know, schools, hospitals. So you get B2B contracts. B2B. So you're servicing them are you also, and you're also selling them the parts and services yeah. at times. At, at times, I mean, usually we'll, we'll go in for a service call and we'll need to know, diagnose it properly to, to replace a thermostat or a burner depending on what it is, so that's how we're So somebody them. reaches out to you, like even Wine Library, right? reaches out and says, hey, we got an issue with our HVAC. You'll come in and audit. Absolutely. And you'll say, you gotta rip it all out, Sasha, or you can fix mm-hmm. it like this, or whatever it may be, right? <laughs> exactly. Then you get in, and then you're kind of locked in, and you try to maintain that account for as long as possible, and then expand your services. 
Hundred percent. Say Sasha, you like a spray? You should be AC. I love using my dad's name. <laughs> uh, you may want to use this for other things, right? So that's the biz. That's the business. Okay. Right. So what's the question? The so quest- why are you here? I, I'm I'm here because um. The skilled trades right now is going to be uh, seeing a massive decline over the next decade. Uh, the skilled trades. So you're saying um, that the our, people that know how to fix these things are starting to decline because all these guys like Babin and D-Rock and Stefan, whereas the 30, 40 year old mm-hmm. version, you know, 30, 40 years ago, their parents knew how to do something. Now they're just fancy. They don't know how to, they, they're just not real men, <laughs> yeah. right? Is what you're saying. They're not attracted to this. Yeah. You know, it's, I get it. It's They'd rather of, do cameras or yeah. new digital. Exactly. The, the engineer craftiness is in a different place. Exactly. And, and, you know, yeah. and you talk a lot about college. This is, this is the alternative. You come to me, there's no debt. I train you. I pay you. And then I get you a van in six, six months to a year. That's, that's the upside of it. But the problem is I feel like maybe the youth doesn't really know about it. How, how do I attract them? Or it's not sexy. Not it's sexy. not sexy. If you're a 17 year old, you're not sitting there right now. You're thinking you want to be an influencer. You're thinking you want to be a rapper and upload on Spotify. You're thinking that you're going to start the next Uber. There's no, you know, unlike the vocational skills of the 40s, 50s, and 60s where it was romantic to go into the union and be an electrician and have that run or be an entrepreneur and start your own electrician business. Exactly. There's not a sex appeal to the youth to come into the circle. Yeah, yeah. it's the truth. So what's happening? But there, I, I'm curious, this is me asking you a question. Is, is the deal flow of the skill sets not coming potentially from immigrants or other low income areas? That's always been historically the people that have fed in or because of the power of the internet itself. Even if you're in a lower income area, you think you're gonna start a meme page on Instagram and that's you're gonna be, your, or flip sneakers. That's how you're gonna get out, yeah. Yeah, uh, honestly I, I think that um there's, the people just don't know about it. Um, as everyone gets older, just kids don't know about this industry. I think that's just the, the, the toughest part. Uh, getting okay, them, so voc- vocationals, vocational schools, you know, in high schools, they're gone. There's, there is no more shop, there's no more vocational school. Um, it, and it's, it's a dirty business, but yeah. it's a lucrative business. So you need to think about, so as you think about it, going back, like if we go back in the day, right? Henry Ford created vertical everything, right? So he owned the full start to finish. You need to think about how do you how do you feed your pipeline of talent, because you've got to grow them. In order to grow your business, you need skilled people to do it. And so I would think about how do you how do you how do you bring old make what was old new again, and think about how do you grow how do you vertical talent, right? How do you how do you find new ways to make your job seem sexy? And I think one of the things you said is like, no debt, immediate income is a real need of a lot of people. And it might be really interesting to think about it from, from that angle. How do you find and source new talent? You know, I'm thinking about it. Uh, I think there's a lot of themes in that. And Brent, I'm glad you jumped in there because it gave me a seed to build on top of. It's been wild to me to watch how many people think it's not sexy, but at least acceptable now to go garage sailing and dollar store shopping and thrift store shopping because of, I've been pushing it, other people have been pushing it. You know, I think one of the things you can think about is two separate things. One, I think you and the personalities within your organization, vlogging is something you need to consider. Day in the life. I've started. I love it. January, because of you. And? <laughs> and it takes I'm, time, I'm, right? I'm get, it's getting a, it takes time, but I'm getting a lot of uh, messages and traction within my industry. Love the videos, love what you're doing, love seeing the technicians on the road, so I just I need to get a wider audience and keep building. It's gonna and take the other, time. And the other thing is you have to make content that speaks to, hey kids, yeah. You want to make money? Yeah. Here's one way. Flat out. I think the other thing you can think about is starting a micro school of your own. So I think one of the this is where it gets weird. I always tell people, remember that Nintendo started off as a playing card company, right? Like I actually this is this is my best advice for small businesses. You might need to be in a business you can't even see yet that's yeah. connected, a kissing cousin as I call it, to the business that you already have. Meaning what would happen if you started selling a thousand dollar course online to teach people how to build a fifty to hundred thousand dollar van business globally? And then what would happen is if you can make that business successful, you would make money in that business and it would be the pipeline. You could do something where like, hey, it, you know, think about it in four years. It's a $10,000 course now, not a thousand. And if you, we hire you, we refund you the course price. 
So imagine creating a million dollar, it's kind of like what's happened at Vayner. We're built for Chase, but you probably know this as somebody who's here, between you know, 4Ds and Vayner mentors, I'm building a lot of SMB businesses because I'm reacting to the opportunity. So I think if you had literally 100 people a year, year one, paying $1,000, you've got a $100,000 business. If you take three of those people and refund them, right? You're in for 970 on top line revenue and you have three qualified people that you basically trained in your way. I think you should consider putting some real energy and money into building up a school that's inexpensive for people globally and then pick the valedictorians and hire them. them. Right, right. It's the old sort of beauty school model, right? That has sort of gone away in today's age and it's a way to take the internet of all things that you're struggling with on the other side of your business, right? Your customers are starting to order their parts directly so it's a way to take that and make it work for your advantage by finding the skilled labor that you need. One last piece of advice before we throw you out of here. All right. Go to Twitter, search people talking about your industry. You know terminology around a thermos that, that or uh, you know, an HVAC unit that I could never imagine. I did this with wine. I looked up wine terms that normal people would have never known mm-hmm. and I just engaged with people. Built a huge profile that way. Back to getting your hands dirty that nothing is more effective than 9 to 11, 9 p.m. to 11 at night when you're hungry to just be after a long day and you, I grew up in a retail environment, you the same, yeah. long day, you're laying there on the couch in bed and just being on Twitter searching and engaging, you have, if your URL on your Twitter profile is linked properly, you would be flabbergasted how much that networking would do. Excellent. Good luck, brother. Thank you, brother. Thanks for coming on. Thank you very much. All right, who's next? All right, we're moving on. We we magically had a second person appear. I have no idea how you guys are. I'm I'm so used to improv. I'm not sure how this is being edited, but I'm excited about it. So why don't you tell the uh, Vayner Nation and everybody who's watching a little bit about yourself. What's your name? What do you do? Okay, my name is Emily Cataldo. I am the co-owner of Severio's Authentic Pizza Napolitana. It's located in Massapequa, Long Island. It is part of our family business, which is an established business for over 51 years. It's 5-1. 51. Incredible. Congrats. My dad opened up yeah. A&S Pork Store in Massapequa in 1967. And my husband, my son, myself, we've been working there. Oh, God. All 35 years. years. All those years. You know something almost. about family businesses. Yeah, yeah, you know it. I know. So um, our goal so is. So it was originally a pork store. Originally a pork store, was Italian import deli. deli. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when did when did when did it when did it start segueing into pizza as well? Uh, January of 2015, we opened oh, up our new. doors. Three years, and the response has been unbelievable. And it was. You're making actually good pizza. Great pizza, yeah. and it was a leap of faith because Massapequa is Massa Pizza. So there is pizza on every street corner, but nothing like ours. Why nothing like yours? Because we do traditional Neapolitan style pizza. Everything else is great pizza. American pizza, yep. we all grew up on it as kids. My kids grew up on it as well. Um, but this is authentic Italian. When we went to um, Naples to visit my family, we had this fabulous pizza, and it was like a light bulb went off, and we said, wow, we gotta do this at home. We have everything on this pizza in our store. This is a no-brainer, we have to do this. So. It took us quite a while. It was some bumps and uh, bumps along the road. We were all our family. Beca- be- just like debating it. Or no, no, there was never just debate. It was just time right? wise, um, figuring out space in our property because we own the property. Sure. So we took um, an area which was considered ravioli pasta production storage. So we did it ourselves to cut costs. We were there every night, taping, spackling, painting, building nice. um, the storefront. Opened up the storefront, oh, washed Good the business. windows broke through the wall, so now our original store that had a wall dividing it has a walkway so you can access the pizza room from the pork store. Uh, Very well thought out by my husband, I must say. Um, And it's been wonderful. We were doing a soft opening, January 23rd. We just said, all right, let's open up the doors for the pizza. Let's do this. We didn't have a menu. We didn't have any advertisement. <laughs> we had no employees, but me and my husband, we had a little bowl you had of your sauce. Normal, you had your normal foot traffic from the, reg, from the first store. Right, and, and people and just popped their heads in and said, what you doing? Yeah. And we said, we're making pizza today, you want one? So we had, I, I think, 66 I pizzas I um, that first day. So we looked at each other and we said, what are we gonna do? <laughs> I don't know if I could do this by myself. So day two, you know, still no menu, um, 102 pizzas, day two. I was folding boxes and the pizzas were coming out of the oven. And out the door they went. It was phenomenal. So we've been blessed because our population in the community has taken a loving word to about. our pizza. Yeah. Strictly word of mouth, some social media, yeah. which I try to do, not as good as you, I must say. Um, <laughs> I try to do, um, um, and just, just blessings from everywhere. Newsday, Restaurant Hunter, Yelp, um, 
You were just getting a lot of organic love. Oh my God, yeah, uh, Long Island Press. Best specialty pizza, 2018, Long Island. I mean, insane stuff. And everyone yes. just loves the pizza. Right. Loves the family vibe. Right. Loves that we're there the all the time. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that's so important. What you've, what you've struck on, right, is something that differentiates you. Like you said, it's Massa Pizza. Right. Massa Pizza. So literally, how did, you found a niche that nobody else was in right. and you could own. Exactly. Because you care so much about the product and you we knew do. you could make something different. What's super interesting is it's a double-edged sword, right? Because what really stands out is that it's not scalable, right? You're not gonna compete against people that are gonna be that authentic. Mm -hmm. What is the double-edged part of the sword is when you have a concept that works so well, intuitively it's like, wait a minute, maybe we could go somewhere 15 minutes down the street or 30 minutes down the street or in Manhattan. Like, you start having those feelings of should we expand and right. some of and the magic where is at. that you guys are at. So is that where that's you're at? That's where we're at. So talk exactly. me through it. Talk Ideally. me through it. So we own the property. Yes. Um, the deli side is the largest side of the property but we have put dining tables there. <clears throat> so the feel of the atmosphere there is you're eating in my kitchen. So it's in our pork store. We've set up tables. We have outdoor seating, little uh, little seating and bar stools in the um, in the pizza side. So everybody who's in the pizza side watches Sam make the pizza, watches Paolo take them out. It's like amazed that the kids love it. The kids line up, they watch. They get mozzarella over the counter. It's like very home. Welcome to my kitchen table love. feel. So now we're debating second oven because our volume has increased um, and production is hard. Four pies go in at a time. Every, let me start by saying everything is made to order. So when I take your order, that dough is placed on the counter fresh, that pizza is made to order, it's baked to perfection on a plate or in a box, and out you go. Um, and because so, you're doing traditional, you have a very specialized oven, right? We have an, an imported Mario Quinto oven. Um, yeah. It's wood burning, and it's yeah. amazing. It's spectacular. So a second oven isn't just plugging in a new no, system. No, second oven is an endeavor. Build. We have yeah. to um, make the connections again in Naples, set up shipping, have it come over the ocean, take out the window, take out the, the awning. The ocean will always get you. Yeah, yeah. well, <laughs> um, reinforce the basement like we did the first time. We have um, beams and posts or in so our basement. Keep going, keep going. So I'm we have to do I'm that. I'm following what you're putting down. So that's where we're at now. We want to get a second oven. Do we expand? That's the real question I have for you here. Do you expand a second oven there or do you have a second location? Right. Mm -hmm. And we have a property next door. So here's the three storefronts, A&S Pork Store, Severio's, and we have a third property that's attached to us that we use as a rental income. So we haven't rented out. Uh -huh. Okay, so I don't want to put our oven in that area because let's just say 15 years from now this whole pizza thing fizzles and I got an oven in a random business that I can't rent now. That's not a good way so to I think about it. So I want to keep it. That's not a good way to no. think about it. Mm -mm. 15, 15 years from now? 15 years from now we might be making pizza on Mars. Yeah, right. true. You're way right. too, you know, true. this is what my dad always did. The reason I reacted so viscerally is my dad would make this, this is so classic family, but like I'm sitting yeah. here, I'm like this is like the best. Family. It's super family, like that's what we did. Like, like we literally renovated Wine Library and put steel beams in the middle of the store. We were open while we were dropping beams. Mm -hmm. Like it's, because you're just like, you're milking yeah. every yeah. second. Yeah. One of the things that I thought I think family businesses and small business owners make a huge mistake of is it's, you know, the one thing that's, it's a double-edged sword. Because the business is literally your other child, mm -hmm. you treat it forever. So you as a business owner are saying to yourself, crap, I don't want to put that oven in there for 15 years from now, or if the pizza, first of all, the pizza thing is not going anywhere. No, I don't think I it think is. I think we can all establish that people are going to eat pizza for the rest of time. Right. Right, that's not going anywhere. I think that, you need to be able to be in a place where I'm a big fan of like, think about everything going to zero. So when you're thinking about financing, whether it's through a bank or friends or mm -hmm. your own profits and you're gonna live more humbly, you need to, it, once you can afford it, or if you can now, the oven, you can't be thinking about the downside of it. The upside of the next three or four years is gonna pay out. Right. Like if, that like, space. that's I right. I get that. I get it. That's right. Okay. So, so keep going. All right. So that's where we're at. We're just trying to juggle. Um, Do you want it? Like, what kind of lease does that third place have? Uh, they have one more year. Got it. I mean. Can you wait that long? I, I would say the bigger argument is. I apologize. Well, no. actually, answer that. You know what? We can wait that long because now we you have our outdoor seating. Um, we have our outdoor seating, so it was to accommodate more people because we've had a wait outside. In the winter, it was rough because it was cold, so we'd have people waiting indoors against the doorway. So it's not really it's pleasant tough. for people because we don't have a waiting area. So that would allow us a waiting let me, area. Let me ask you the question that's burning in my heart, and I would argue that the mistake that my dad and I made, even though the internet became such a big part of our business, if I could do it again, 
I would absolutely open a second location for Wine Library, not make the ridiculous investment we made in building one super wine library. Okay. Because I believe that convenience is king. And the reality is, is people are hearing about your pizza, this is gonna be watched all over the internet. Like, like you know, how much have you debated you know, I think family businesses also love their nest. Mm-hmm. It's cozy. It is. I have no idea how close it is to the house or not. Oh, uh, not very far, a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I would argue for the sake of the business, what kind of debates, if any, have you had if, you know, about opening 17 minutes away somewhere else where there's open space? We would be 100% willing to do so. Um, that was my second question to Good. you. How do we locate the best spot for our second Severios? That's my main concern. This, we knew where it was going to go because it's our property. And we knew we were going to do it there. So now ta- trying to figure out where is the best position. There's do we t- look for an established place that was a pizza place that closed down? Or do we want raw to make it our own? Like, what's the best? You, you, I have some thoughts on this. Uh, yeah. Um, my thought is, uh, uh, you know what differentiates your pizza. Mm-hmm. So you're not going to find a place that doesn't have a pizza shop within 30 seconds of it, right? Absolutely. So you can't worry about that. Right. No, I, no. Would, I would shy away, me personally, since you're doing pizza, I would shy away from going to another pizza place because people in that neighborhood are going to associate you as, oh, that's Vinny's. Okay. And they vote, you know, Makes and that's so just new, new people in Vinny's. Exactly, right? got so that. So I would find a place that's different that hasn't been a pizza shop before, okay. me personally, and create your okay. second store. Okay. Um, but not so much worry about the competition per se, just worry, make sure the customers are there. Yeah, no, make that's sure the foot traffic. I'm worried about the foot key. traffic sure and being a, a parking area. Yeah. Like I need to really like make and it convenient for the people to get in, grab the pizza and go. Yeah. That's another issue we find that's, where we are too. that's a piece too. of cake. Yeah? yeah. Of course. Okay. Like there are unlimited amounts of huge shopping centers that are willing to lease you space that have unlimited parking. Wine library, you, had a, you have a parking issue in your current yeah. place? Again, I'm, I can't tell you how much this feels like. We had eight parking spots for a business doing $15 million a year. <laughs> like we would yep. shut down Milburn, New Jersey because the traffic was so absurd. Okay. Here's what I would say. There's unlimited locations that have enough parking for you to go in and for people to go in and out. Okay. I would argue that I think Brent's not wrong, <laughs> but I would also argue that he's not necessarily right. right. Meaning, meaning there's been a million places that have been restaurants that have been successful being, because they operated better than the restaurant that they came, you know, we see it all, I mean, I have 10 that I can think of right now where people came in and did a very similar restaurant to what was there before and crushed it okay. because they were better operators. Better. Yeah. I'll be very honest with you. When I hear a pedigree of 51 years, family business, not being crazy and raising too much money, being being scrappy enough to paint their own shit. I don't know if we can curse on this, beep it. Which Chase, you know, who knows. But like, since it's my show, I can. So I would say this. Run your numbers as a family. Okay. Be able to afford if you're completely wrong. Okay. And the second you can get close enough to that, go. Okay. That's what family businesses should do. Okay. They shouldn't make leaps that they can't afford. But when I hear that much pent up demand, my, and knowing enough about the East Coast and Long Island and Jersey and New York culture, as long as you don't go too far away, you start going into that 15, 20 minute zone, your word of mouth is gonna carry. Okay. And I have a funny feeling you're gonna do quite well. Okay, thank you. You know what I would do immediately? Is ask every single person that comes into your restaurant for the, to the pizza place over the next 30 days, where they're from. Oh yeah, we do that and Pen? people want us out east in Babylon, when are you coming to Babylon, when are you coming to Babylon, when are you coming to Babylon. Well on see, on like yeah. this is pissing me off. Because like now when I hear that, like we need to be in Babylon. We need to be in Babylon. Like I don't know Babylon and I don't know how close that is, but like. It's about 20 minutes. Right, the fact okay. that you just mentioned Someone three people yeah. saying when are you coming to Babylon, I'd start with Babylon. Okay. Yeah. Can I ask you a separate question? Sure. Does the whole family agree with the expansion? Absolutely. Yes. We have our family okay. support 110%. We are a big family. We have four children. How many people are in the business? All right. On the pizza side, we have three full-time, and we have three part-time. On the pork store side, we have five full-time employees. No, no I'm sorry. Family people in the business. Oh, family? Mm-hmm. Me, my husband, my, hus- my, my son, and my dad. Got it. Four of you. Yeah. And everybody's full-time? Uh, my dad's retired, but he's there every day. <laughs> retired. retired. Right. Oh, yeah. well, you know. <laughs> yeah, of course It's I his know. baby. I mean, it, oh, this is his Is he pumped momentum. about the pizza thing? He is pumped about the pizza thing. It okay. has brought new life into the store where we were. Mm-hmm. The purpose of opening mm-hmm. it was 
Okay. Give them a lift. Everybody's not eating the way they used to eat. Nobody's making a pot of gravy anymore. People are looking mm -hmm. for, you know, prepared food. Uh, so we had to do something to get new life into the store, yeah, new families. Work. It did. It was amazing. So now people are coming for pizza and then realizing that there's this beautiful, clean butcher shop next door. They could walk through. They do their grocery Smart. shopping for the week. Smart. It has been phenomenal. And my father's very happy that there's new people that he could meet and greet. It gives him a purpose. He's 83. I totally understand. You have a pad. Have I a couple do. Of minutes. Is okay. there anything you haven't answered? Um, you know what? How do I increase a social media following? <laughs> First of all, and I'm glad you asked this, especially from an SMB standpoint, small business, you want to make sure that you, it's not about increasing a social media following. That's no different than having more cars in the parking lot, more emails for the email newsletter, more addresses for the coupons that you want to send. It's, it's about understanding why. So here's what I would say. The best thing you could do for your business is to learn how to spend $100 a week on Facebook in a five mile radius of your store right now okay. to get people to come into the store Okay. Just to try it. Okay. I don't care how many Instagram followers you have, Twitter followers, Facebook followers. I know right now that if you spend $100 on Facebook ads people in a five mile radius of your store, that you'll have new people come in. And you'll hear stuff, we, we're doing it at Wine Library. Literally, and I see the text this week. I live in your town and I've never been in your store. I've lived okay. here for 30, we're the establishment. Yeah. We are the You're king not. store, 40,000 square foot wine shop. Maybe. They live one mile away. They've lived in town for 17 years and they go to Dave's Liquors and pay 10 times more. Big shout out to Dave's. I appreciate, <laughs> it. I appreciate all businesses. So we'll that's, do that. don't worry about getting more followers. Learn about how to run ads to drive your actual okay. business. That'll do. I have one more quick question. Yeah. Uh, marketing, if we wanted to make Severi as a brand. Like if you, you hear people that have these brands and they're, it's like crazy, like just not to use another pizza place, but like Papa John's, everybody knows Papa John's Well, you're pizza. more than welcome to spend $70 yeah. million dollars a year on Super Bowl commercials. Mm. Yeah. yeah. You gotta, you gotta figure out, go ahead, Brett. I was gonna say, here's something you can do. So just because your new pizza place is not gonna be located near a store, come up with some like really cool packaging for the products you sell in your store and put them in the pizza place, right? So people start to associate okay that you're also a product, Got it. a product company as well as pizza, that you can start small on. Okay. And then think about the internet distribution of products from the store okay. through, that would be. I'm gonna throw one curveball. I think that's right. I'm gonna throw one curveball. This is a, <laughs> this is a very Jersey, New York, Long Island thing. So when I go, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. You know what that is? PC Richards. PC Richards. Right. I think sound is the new frontier. I'm gonna throw a very ridiculous curveball at you. I think that you guys should come up with a jingle that is okay. either similar to PC Richards or that 1-800 car for kids, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah, I know that one too. Yeah. Of course you do, that's why I'm bringing those two up. <laughs> okay, awesome. I think an authentic pizza shop in Long Island that could run Facebook, Instagram, Pandora Local, mm -hmm. and even Drive Time Radio if you could come up with a sound, right, for all the youngsters, they know exactly what Netflix sounds like when it comes up on the screen, Yeah. right? Yeah. Intel, I think sound is the next frontier. I love sound in a very localized area. It could be very, very, very like local, you know? Cliche, mm -hmm. like just like that classic Italian accent or something. Maybe it's your dad saying yo, like literally, I'm not kidding. I, I do think there's so, you wanna become a brand and not spend 70 million? Come up with a sound, because everybody's competing on social. Nobody's competing on jingles or a quick little tag, an audio tag. Okay. Thank cool. you. Thanks for it being on the show. Such a pleasure. Such a pleasure. All right, we're continuing with uh, our third and final. Is that right? Third and third final, final uh, guest here. This is a team effort, so I'm excited. So Ooh. guys, why don't you introduce yourselves to the Vayner Nation and tell us about uh, what you do. I am Tyler. My name is Tyler Braddock. I run The Vault alongside Gabby, which is my girlfriend. The Vault is a recording studio, um, so you, you can get the yeah, pictures so yourself. Yeah, my name's Gabriella Barrero, or I go by Gabby, and we run The Vault Music Studio, located out of Rockaway, New Jersey. Full service music studio, we do networking events, we do producer classes, engineering classes, we do shows, anything that we can do. We're actually starting a YouTube, couple YouTube episodes too, around some of our local artists in our area, and all encompassing videography, photography for all the artists within the area. How long have you been doing it? 
So it's been out of his room. Um, he's been producing engineering out of his room, which was in his parents' house for yep. about seven years. Six, seven years. Love it. Yep. Just recently in August, we went into a brick and mortar, enough revenue, enough clientele to expand out. That must so, have been awesome. Yes. Oh, yeah. Great feeling. That's yeah. the Freedom. Best feeling. <laughs> <laughs> out of your parents' hair and stuff. Of course. Yeah, yeah, so just since August. Were your parents super pumped too? Oh, yeah. <laughs> they were like, finally, no, no yeah. sound like at three in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so since August, and we're actually going to be that scary? expanding. Oh yeah, it took, it took me at least like overhead. a year thinking about it and like trying to find out if and I. What about really... for you, Gab? How, how long have you guys been together? Uh, Four and a half yeah. years. Awesome. Yeah, coming in July. Um, honestly, for me, I thought it was time. Yeah. I thought it was time like two years ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it did take him a little bit more time. He's a little bit less of a risk taker, so I, I tried it. to bring him to the edge of the cliff and okay, like look over it. Let's Listen, start. Listen, I'll be honest ready. with you. So everybody's watching. I think people need to be in their parents' home, their own home, co-working spaces the basement like way longer. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you know, you'd much rather be a year later than a year too early because when you're a year too early, you're out of business. Yeah. When Very you're a true. year later, you left some money on the table. Well, you, said right. it, you said it exactly right, which is you took the time to analyze to make sure you could afford to take the step. And I think that's one of the biggest mistakes small business owners don't do. I'm not saying don't act, but understand your situation. Right. Because if you're gonna springboard, you need to know where you're springboarding from and to. And so, and it's exactly, don't, don't ever let it hold you back, but understanding it is key. Way too many people don't, uh, the game, I, listen, everybody thinks I'm so aggressive. I play the same game every time. If I do this and everything fails, like, can I afford the blow? Mm -hmm. And so I think, I think people take way too many risks out of ego mm -hmm. and wanting to be fancy and, you know, your situation, yeah. like, getting out of the parents' basement, everyone's like, oh, your business isn't real, it's in your parents' basement. Mm -hmm. And then they jump too early and they lose. Having the humility and the patience, I'm a big fan of that, brother, really, I am. Okay. Don't worry what Gabby said. <laughs> 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 All right, so cool, so you guys make the jump. Yes. Yeah. A year ago, you said? Um, August, actually. August. August. So seven months. So, okay. Yeah, August, yeah. yeah. And? So our landlord's actually gonna be selling our building. He needs okay. us to be out by June. It was originally May, but now it's June. So that's one of our major questions. It's kind of tiered. So first of all, do we go for a space that's less fancy, more literally like in hands deep? You have to redo everything yourself for like mm -hmm. 750 a month, maybe 1,200 square feet, so we can expand because we're in 700 now, or do we expand out to a space that's Maybe like this room, beautiful, well. Um, we can do all our networking events there. No need to go out so outside. Let's make sure we can answer this question. I think there's something interesting that's evolving here th that I want to make sure I understand. Mm -hmm. The hardcore production and all that, that's your skill, right? Yeah. You've been able to layer on what it feels like is like a community of sorts. Yes, oh, yeah. yes. In the current location, what are you doing around events and community? Yeah, so we really look towards um, our next door neighbor across the street is actually a huge children's theater. So we'll rent out from them. We'll also rent out to several different businesses, not only helping them out because, you know, the yeah. person's owner's failing or cancer or something. Yeah. So it kind of gives them income, gives them a little look into our age range because all of our age range is millennials, 18 to 24. A little sprinkle in the other areas, um, but mainly focused on at least 16, 70 to 24. So in and terms what do you of do? You do events? Yeah, so we do, they're called artist meetups every other Sunday, which is completely free. That's what we do to give back. You know, like you say, you have to do something that gives back, that lets them know, kind of adds value. You do value. Them sometimes in your own place as well? Yeah, we did, but so, it was yeah. too large. So the, we, the it was like a fire well. hazard. Yeah. I got it. So you started place. doing them, yeah. people showed up, you're yeah. like, oh shit, yes. we need to do this somewhere else. Yes. Yeah. Let's give love to some of the businesses in the yes. area. Yeah. Exactly. Cool, keep exactly. going. And we also do shows. So those same businesses maybe can hold 150 people. So I'll put together a lineup of artists, our artists that pay us for slots, 10, 15 minute, 20 minute slots. And then we put on a show. We actually have one this coming Saturday. Um, and we've done one previously in, New, uh, in, uh, in November. November. We call them the vault's very own because it's all our own artists that work with us. And they invest in us, we invest right back. And do people, do people pay you to produce music for them? Do, are, there's no Space where they come into studio or is there? That's what that's my that's my field. So I record, I produce, I do so anything. So I come in, I'm like, yo, I can sing. You're gonna produce. Let's work. Got yeah. It. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you have that space. You keep that yes. space. Yes. Yeah. So we have. Separate. You walk yeah. in. You see, have a studio right there. Yep. And then you walk in the other room, and that's where we hold a lot of our smaller meetings, any producer meetups, engineering meetups. I now understand. So now you're talking about the next step. Yes. Because yes. you gotta move. Yep. One stop shop, basically for all music, anything you need. I don't. You know, my first take at this to answer this, I don't know if you need anything bigger 
because it sounds like you're gonna need something really big mm-hmm. to fill the capacity yes. of the demand yes. that you're able to create. Mm-hmm. That means that you're gonna continue to do things in other places. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're gonna evolve into a place where sure, you'll give back once in a while, but other times, if you can have hundreds of people showing up somewhere, that's something you can charge for. Mm-hmm. You know, like you're gonna yeah. find, that's like a business in itself. Yeah. 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 You know, my early read is I would get enough space for you to, I would probably replicate where you're at now. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't make it just studio because that would eliminate you wanting to be there because yeah. you need that other area to do a little flavor. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think you have to go super so crazy okay. and I would want to keep down the overhead. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree completely. I think, I think um, go a little bit bigger so you can do, you know, call it 20, 30% of the events in your space. Uh-huh. I love the idea the way you've called it a community yeah. because I think that will ultimately pay back for you mm-hmm. because you'll have these businesses that you've helped that want to help you continue to grow. And I think that network is going to be really, really powerful. To Gary's point, how do you monetize that in the long term? If you bring 100 people to a local coffee shop that's struggling, that's worth something to that coffee shop. And it's okay to to talk about that. I think that's another thing small business owners don't do enough of is they they undervalue the services they provide to other people. And so it's really okay for you to have that conversation. And if you, as long as you deliver on it, yeah. deliver on your promise. You have two separate businesses that are attached. You almost have like a barbell. Mm-hmm. You know, like you have two separate businesses that are attached because you're using the artist there. Mm-hmm. It's really clever and I actually think that you need to be thoughtful about this because I think there's something, they really work hand in hand. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So keep talking. And our other major question is, I now I work in accounting. He works full time in the studio, so I spend all my other time in the studio. And it's beginning to get to the point where there's so much work and I can only do so much of it with research paper, term papers. I'll she be graduating but, yeah. and I have an offer from different accounting firms. But I don't know because I don't know if I, I really want to just do the business full time. But I talk to other people and they're like, oh, you need health insurance. You know, I'm 23, but I'm like, oh my gosh, I need health insurance, you know, hmm. and all these things. And I'd love to literally really like for lack of you know what you say like I'd love to just eat shit I don't have a lot of overhead myself maybe a car loan not too much that I'm on my plate right now so I don't mind doing that because I love what we do and I love helping these artists but I just don't know if I should stay just go into an accounting for full time I'm just here's my answer on this you can always get the accounting job Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah it's always there it's always there. Yeah. It, you know, clearly I heard what I needed to hear, which is that you're willing to go real humble mm-hmm. to see this dream come through. The only reason people should get a job is not because they need health insurance yeah. at 23. <laughs> it's because that they want to live a certain lifestyle at 23. Mm-hmm. Like you want a fancier car, you want a better apartment, you want to be able to buy a nice purse or go to more Broadway shows or buy partial season tickets to the Knicks. What people don't understand is that getting a job is incredible for two things. Affording you a better lifestyle in the short term, Mm -hmm. comma, taking risk and pressure out of the system. Mm -hmm. When you work at the, all these characters that work at VaynerMedia, they can't worry about Vayner the way I worry about it. That's anxiety, that's stress, that's pressure. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So what's great about an accounting job is you get to go in nine to five. And like you get to like, like if the pipe bursts on the you 15th. You don't have to fix it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. if somebody fires you, it's not something you're gonna st- dwell about for six you know, weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, but what's great about this is you're so young and willing to eat shit mm-hmm. that my biggest thing is if you're willing to go there, go and take the leap if it fails, if it doesn't work out, you can always go always back. Go back yeah. that. And as a person who hires people who come out of that situation, having the tenacity to be your own business owner is something that looks great on a resume mm-hmm. going in. Couldn't agree so, more. So don't sweat that, I agree, I agree completely with Gary. The other thing about talent, particularly in your business, leverage local colleges for intern support. You yes. can find yeah. Interns Especially in your music. right. This I mean, particularly like, and events, right? Like music and events, like right? They all want to work yeah. for free because it's music. Like it's yeah. not like and they're going to meet the next yeah. whoever <laughs> coming through your studio, right? Exactly. So, yeah. 
So leverage intern talent for free or low cost labor to yeah. help you fill the gap yeah. while you're growing. Yeah, and that was gonna be my next question is that we do have interns. They okay. love, love, okay. love the music. Actually, one, one of our interns with this. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, but with my side, I do everything else other than music. And for some reason, the interns that wanna do any of the, to help me. Cause your stuff is not as fun. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> but it's like, how do I have yeah. someone else to help me? I have friends. Find people, find, like he, you know, he is gonna be able to convert one out of every three people, you're gonna to have to convert one out of every 100 people. Yeah. Guess what? Find 500 people so you okay. get five people. Okay, yeah. yeah, just keep the door yeah. rotating. When I first started doing content with DRock and Steve Unwin and Andy and Stefan, it was less cool and interesting than it is today. Like, so now you have no problem. Well now, but take me even out of the equation. Yes. Take my uh, like, growth and awareness even just a regular business person, we know this, even just like a high-powered lawyer, boring Ben. Yeah. Boring Ben, the 49-year-old high-powered attorney who read or watched some of my work and it's like, screw it, I'm gonna become America's kind of like, yeah. you know, you know, white collar, like, you know, like, yeah. like, you know, lawyer. He is gonna be able to get people to intern and make Instagram stories and podcasts easier today than three years ago. So the other, the other thing, just so when you're trying to find interns, think about what skills they can have that help you, right? Yeah. So it might be yeah. the mark. Like, how do you fill seats? Give them a challenge, okay. right? So you're, a, it's like you do a hundred people an event. I want you to find a way to do two hundred for the same cost, okay. right? Because like interns love a challenge because they want to go back and tell their story at school. Mm -hmm. And so think about how do you make. You know, it's not all just event planning and serving food and, you know, getting the people there. It's, it's blowing the doors off the event to make it really amazing in a way that you haven't thought of. I would also long. argue, given that I know where you guys are from and this whole Northeast way, interns. There's the interns that go back to school. My intuition is fancy, gonna try to get jobs at VaynerMedia before they come mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. Interns that are stay-at-home moms that miss action, 71-year-old, this, I'm not joking, 71-year-old Stan who's just bored and just sits on the stoop in town. Yeah, yeah. In the same way that you guys have proven to me that you don't have a whole lot of fancy in you, you can get help from anywhere. Call in favors from cousins, like yeah. put on social pressure. Like if you stop somebody from getting beat up in junior high, be like, yo, I need you for us. <laughs> like like yeah, beggars good. can't be choosers. Like I wouldn't, you see where yeah. I'm going? Yeah. Like the streets of family businesses and small businesses don't need to be fancy. Like you just need warm bodies. Yeah. yeah. And I sometimes think warm, like I think like, I've been on a big kick of like people 60 to 100. I mean it, yeah. who just want the action. Yeah, they're not used to it and. They just, they're just in a place where they're like looking for action. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't right. know what to tell you, like yeah. looking yeah. for, yeah. Like, yeah. like you might you be able to get somebody yeah. who, like think about the working mom. There, you know how many women are in the system who are unbelievable A talents but they chose for themselves to be a stay at home mom because they, that was what they were more passionate about yeah. who now decided that but now that their kids are six or seven maybe they're in a place where they don't want to go back full time or, or maybe their kids need them to be around more because they're doing a lot of after school activities. Who'd love for three hours to event plan with you? Mm -hmm. Who are way too qualified for what you're asking them to do? Who are gonna bring triple A skills or stay at home dads with just the way culture's moving? There's so much talent in the system. You can't just go down the cliche paths of like, let's hit up Rockaway Community College and see if we can find somebody. You have to turn every fucking stone. Okay. Mm -hmm. And also, since yes. we see that you're in with so many different musicians, so yes. many different artists, we want to know, we're really big in, in, like, I mean, most of our attention is not meaning we're really big, on Instagram. Instagram is huge for us. And definitely YouTube, yeah. but are there any other social media? And if so, what kind of approaches would you recommend? Not you for artists. love Snapchat, but like, is that? Focus on Instagram and YouTube. Okay. Mm -hmm. You haven't even begun to squeeze that thing yeah. for, you're at point oh 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 one percent So before you're looking yes. for a new thing, go ahead. I was gonna say, particularly when you're starting because you, you need to focus. Because there's just the two of you and maybe yes. an, a stay-at-home mom intern, right? Yeah. So you only have a limited amount of resources. You gotta do those really, really well mm -hmm. before you branch Master, out right. or you're gonna. But, when, you're but gonna, you can post something on Instagram yeah. and be like, hey, we're looking for an intern. We're looking for somebody to help us, you know, not for pay, so call it intern. Call, be smart because when stay-at-home stand, that hits you up and wants to do it because he loves Instagram, like just 
absolutely try to find, like people are so funny about free labor or discounted labor. Life's about trades. Mm-hmm. What's Life's in it for them? Correct. Then, yeah, yeah. Like I love when people are like, don't work for free, know your worth. I work for free every day. <laughs> yeah. Life's about trades. So by the way, you know how many people in your neighborhood think that they're next Beyonce and are more than happy because they don't have a lot of money to trade their 10 hours of work for 10 hours of studio time? It's true. I know it's true. So every move in the tool belt and then if you're able to get a lot of talent to Brent's point, then you can worry about other platforms. But while it's just you two, those two are more than enough for what you do. Thanks guys. Thank you so much. Awesome, take care. Great much. meeting you. Thank, Thank you so, you so much. much. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you guys. Brent, let's let's wrap this up. Yeah. In those, you know, obviously you're a part of the SMB world from a big bank. The themes that you saw in those three uh, individuals, what resonated to you? What's what's in? You know, this started with me saying, "Hey, I want to get you closer to the trenches." Yeah. Yeah. You know, what what did you see in those trenches? What did you feel throughout that? What's what? your recap in this first uh, limited edition? The first limit. I love it. The limited edition yeah. Gary and Brent podcast. Um, so I think what's, what's fascinating is they all struggled with similar versions of the same problem, right? So it's all about growth. They're all at different phases in their, in their life cycle and they're all experiencing it in different ways. But how do I grow my business is the fundamental core of each of those questions. And it's so unique to where you know, the situation was from a, a, a skilled labor supplier to a restaurant entrepreneur to a studio recording events company, but they all struggle with the same thing. And, and finding ways to fund and fuel growth that they can manage and support continues to be just the number one concern. You get to ask the question of the day since you're my co-host guest. What question do you want to ask all the SMBs out there? This is your chance. Forget about everything else happening. This is where you get to get greedy and really yeah. figure out what's on the minds of the SMBs. So don't blow it, A. B, don't worry. I th- I'll ask them more questions in the future if you blow if it. I blow so it. there's not that so much you'll pressure. Know if there's a follow-up question, you know I blow it. <laughs> no, but seriously, on a, on a, you know, this is actually cool. I think this will help a lot of uh, my viewers. What, what are, what are massive companies of your scale sitting and thinking about what question do you want answered by the SMBs? Right, so what's, what's fascinating and what's hopefully gonna blow your mind is we're thinking about the exact same thing that you guys are thinking about. So how do I grow this business in a way that is authentic to me and really represents the love and passion that we have for small business owners, which people may not believe, right? Like I work for Chase, but I'm a human behind Chase yeah, at the end of the day. Fun. I mean, by the way, I think and, people will believe it. Like for yeah. me, it's much more fun that I get the DMs from people that are like, holy crap, I made an extra thousand than when yeah. these cool rappers or athletes are select. Like there's, it's not even close. Right. Like right. random it's, Sally in her nail salon or Rick in his auto body shop is always more powerful to me. Yeah. I'm sure you feel the same thing. It's, it's, the, it's the exact same thing, right? Like so, So we, I want to know, you know, I I want you to know that we struggle with the exact same thing. This is not the statement of the day, Brent. This is the question. See, I knew I'd screw it up. I knew it. What question do you want to ask that they're, you have to understand, thousands of people on YouTube and Facebook are going to answer this question. So here's the selfish question of the day. Good, selfish is fine. What can Chase do to win you as a customer? Because we can help answer every question. And I'm going to change it just to make it more the way I like it. What do you think banks can do to help SM, you as an SMB take right. your business to the next level in a world where crowdfunding, yep. right? Uh, you know, venture capital yep. has become way more prominent. Amazing. Like when I grew up as a kid, it was like go to a bank, not go to a human that's gonna write right. you a check. Right, or go to a go, or set up a GoFundMe page to start, right? I'm so. gonna ask a follow up for you because I'm more curious myself. What has a bank done that's been good for you? That's a great question. Yeah, I mean like, like I'm just curious. Like, like to me it's credit lines are massively important. Yeah. So, those are questions. Brent, Great. thank you. Thank Thanks you, for doing sir. This. Thanks for doing this. It. Thanks for raising your hand and doing it. I no, mean it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. See ya. <laughs>